Australia's West Connects project, a massive road network built deep under Sydney, cost over 45 billion Australian dollars. That's more than double the famous Snowy Mountain scheme, one of Australia's most iconic engineering feats. This incredible underground city stretches 33 kilometers in total length, with an amazing 22 kilometers of it buried deep beneath the surface, making it the longest continuous underground road tunnel in Australia. Building it meant digging out about 3 million cubic meters of rock and earth, which is enough material to fill 1,200 Olympic swimming pools. This project was built with the newest technology to keep millions of people and goods moving. How did engineers carve out this city beneath a city? And what does it take to keep it running safely every single day? Sydney, Australia's biggest city, has been growing very fast. More people, more cars and more trucks meant one big problem, terrible traffic jams. By 2012, the cost of these traffic delays to the New South Wales economy was about 5.1 billion Australian dollars each year. Experts believed this cost would jump to 8.8 .8 billion dollars by 2020 if nothing changed. Roads like Parramatta Road, which carries over 90,000 vehicles daily, were often stuck in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic, making trips slow and unreliable. This was not just annoying for drivers, it hurt businesses and made everyday life harder. To fix this growing problem, the New South Wales government, with guidance from Infrastructure New South Wales, came up with a big idea in 2012, West Connects. The main goal was to build a new motorway network that would connect Sydney's west and southwest with the city centre, the airport and the port. This new network was designed to ease traffic jams, create thousands of jobs and link communities better. The plan was to create a continuous traffic light free route, mostly underground, stretching for 33 kilometers and bypassing up to 52 sets of traffic lights. Moving vehicles underground would also free up surface roads for local use and create new public spaces with over 18 hectares of parks and recreational areas being developed above the tunnels. This approach showed a broader vision for urban planning, aiming to improve the city beyond just traffic flow. West Connects is a huge 33-kilometer motorway network with an amazing 22 kilometers of it running underground. This makes it Australia's longest continuous underground road tunnel. The project was built in stages, with each stage presenting its own major engineering challenges. The first big tunnel section was the M4 East, which opened in July 2019. It includes twin tunnels, each 5.5 kilometers long, with three lanes in each direction. These tunnels are designed with a minimum height clearance of 5.3 meters. This height is taller than many older tunnels, making it easier for larger trucks and freight vehicles to pass through. The M8, which opened in July 2020, features 9 kilometer twin tunnels. These tunnels are 5.1 meters tall and have a wide roof span of 20 meters, making them the widest in Australia at the time they were built. This design choice, with wider and taller dimensions, was a forward-thinking decision to handle future transport needs and larger vehicle types, showing that the project was built not just for today's traffic, but for decades to come. The M4 M8 link tunnels, opened in January 2023, are twin 7.5-kilometre tunnels that connect the M4 at Haberfield to the M8 at St. Peter's. They generally have three or four lanes in each direction, and reach a deepest point of 55 meters underground, with an average depth of 35 meters. The varying tunnel dimensions and depths across these stages show how engineers had to adapt designs to specific geological conditions and urban constraints. The final piece, the Roselle Interchange, opened in November 2023. This complex interchange is mostly underground and features four layers of road tunnels with numerous entry and exit ramps along with six large ventilation tunnels. This intricate design creates an underground spaghetti junction, demonstrating highly advanced civil engineering to maximize connectivity in a tight urban space. Building these underground motorways was a massive undertaking, especially carving through Sydney's bedrock Engineers mostly use special machines called road headers. Think of a road header as a giant robot arm with a spinning metal head, like a huge drill. It scrapes and cuts away at the rock, moving forward on tracks. As it cuts, the broken rock falls onto a conveyor belt that carries it out the back, usually into a dump truck. 
WestConnex tunnels were dug mainly through strong rock types like Hawkesbury Sandstone and Ashfield Shale. For the M4 East tunnels, 18 road headers worked around the clock. Another 18 road headers were used for the M8 tunnels, and 21 road headers carved out the 22 kilometers of tunnels for the Roselle interchange. For the M4 M8 link, 28 road headers were used, working day and night to remove around 10,000 tons of spoil every day. These machines are highly flexible because they can cut tunnels of different shapes and sizes, which was very important for the complex and varied layout of WestConnex, unlike tunnel boring machines which create a fixed circular bore. This choice of excavation method was directly influenced by the need to create complex, multi-lane and multi-level tunnels, especially for the intricate junctions like the Roselle interchange. As the road headers dug, engineers did not just leave a raw hole. Every one to five meters they installed ground support. This involves drilling long metal rods called rock bolts into the tunnel roof and walls. Then they spray a special type of concrete called shotcrete onto the surfaces. This creates a strong, stable lining that holds the rock in place. For the M8 tunnels, a thinner layer of shotcrete was used, with added fibers for extra strength and fire protection. This was a clever engineering innovation that reduced the overall amount of shotcrete used by 15%, a world-first achievement showing a focus on both efficiency and advanced safety. Digging these tunnels meant moving an incredible amount of rock and earth. The WestConnex project excavated about 3 million cubic meters of material. To give you an idea of how much that is, it is enough to fill 1,200 Olympic swimming pools. Managing this huge volume of excavated material, called spoil, was a major challenge. The project aimed to reuse as much of it as possible, following a reduce-reuse-recycle approach. In fact, 100% of the tunnel spoil was reused, and 98% of all construction waste was recycled. This commitment to beneficial reuse and connection to the circular economy was a significant achievement for the environment. To move this spoil efficiently and reduce truck traffic on busy city streets, a special plan was put in place. For some parts of the project, like the M4 West Connects, spoil was loaded onto freight trains at a facility in Chalora, Sydney. These trains then carried the material, which was classified as virgin excavated natural material, to the Illawarra region south of Sydney, where it was reused for other construction projects. This rail transport system, despite requiring about 255 truck movements per day just to get the spoil to the rail transfer facility, helped reduce the number of heavy trucks on Sydney roads, improving traffic flow, safety, and even air quality. This strategic decision to use rail transport, even with its logistical complexities, prioritized reducing surface road congestion and environmental impact. Keeping the air clean inside and outside WestConnex tunnels is a top priority. All tunnels have advanced ventilation systems that work hard to remove air safely and efficiently. Fresh air is drawn in from the tunnel entrance and then powerful jet fans, which are like giant airplane engines, push the air through the tunnel. As vehicles move, they also help push air along. Before the air leaves the tunnel, it is pushed up and out through tall ventilation structures, sometimes called stacks, high into the atmosphere. This design prevents emissions from coming out of the tunnel entries or exits where cars enter and leave. WestConnex follows New South Wales' very strict air quality rules, which are among the highest standards in the world, especially for tiny particles known as PM2.5. Air quality is continuously monitored 24 hours a day, seven days a week, both inside the tunnels at the ventilation outlets and in the surrounding neighborhoods. This monitoring tracks pollutants like carbon monoxide and nitrogen dioxide. Studies have shown that air quality on busy surface roads, like Parramatta Road, actually improved by more than 10% after the M4 tunnels opened, because traffic moved underground. This demonstrates that well-designed tunnel ventilation systems can help make city air cleaner overall, addressing common concerns about tunnels worsening local air quality. WestConnex is not just concrete and rock. It is a smart motorway packed with technology to make journeys safer and smoother. At the heart of it all is the Motorway Control Center, where a team of experts watches the entire network 24 hours a day, seven days a week. More than 2,300 cameras cover every inch of the motorway, 
including special cameras that detect stopped vehicles and monitor speed. Live electronic signs display real-time travel information and variable speed limits, which can change based on traffic conditions or incidents. This helps manage how many cars enter the motorway at certain points, keeping traffic flowing and preventing jams. This integrated system represents a shift from static road design to dynamic traffic management. Safety in the tunnels is boosted by many features. There are over 4,000 LED lights for clear visibility and another 4,000 emergency lights. Water deluge systems are ready to put out fires and emergency telephones are placed throughout the tunnels. A digital radio system can even broadcast safety advice directly through car radios. The tunnels also feature taller height clearances and over-height vehicle detection systems at all entrances to reduce incidents. Even underground, your navigation works. WestConnects uses special Bluetooth beacons, over 1,500 of them installed in the tunnels. These beacons send signals that help popular navigation apps like Waze keep track of your location, even when GPS signals cannot reach. This means drivers will not lose their way or miss an exit while traveling deep underground, showcasing a focus on user experience and seamless technological integration. WestConnex has delivered significant benefits to New South Wales. It created over 10,000 jobs during its construction, including many apprenticeships, building a skilled workforce for future projects. The project is expected to bring more than 20 billion Australian dollars in economic benefits to the state. Drivers are already saving a lot of time, up to 40 minutes on journeys between Parramatta and Sydney Airport, and an average of 35 minutes on the M4 in peak times. The project also moves thousands of vehicles underground, taking about 3,000 trucks a day off Parramatta Road, which helps reduce surface congestion and emissions. Building WestConnex was a massive financial undertaking. Its cost grew from an initial estimate of $10 billion in 2012 to over $45 billion. This increase was due to factors like higher-than-expected land purchases, which alone accounted for approximately $1.5 billion, changes to the project's scope, and unexpected challenges during construction, especially in busy city areas where existing pipes and cables made digging harder. The project was funded through a mix of government money and private investment, the Australian government provided a $1.5 billion grant and a $2 billion concessional loan, and the New South Wales government added $3.6 billion. A big step was in 2018 when a consortium led by Transurban required a 51% share of WestConnex for $9.26 billion, bringing in substantial private capital. If you found this deep dive into WestConnex fascinating, make sure to like this video, subscribe to Ultimate Mega Builds for more engineering marvels, leave a comment below with your thoughts, and turn on notifications so you do not miss our next video.